we're going to get started. We've uh, we've got a quick 20 minutes and, you know, like 150 slides, like all Microsoft employees. Just kidding. Um, so uh, to start, James Ringold, I've been in the industry about 30 years. Uh, if you really want to look me up, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, aka, or not aka, well, aka.ms slash jringold will uh, get you to my LinkedIn. Uh, this is Common Ground, so we're going to talk about topics in an interactive way. Um, I've framed this discussion to be interactive. I'm going to ask questions. I expect someone to just have an answer, so um, it'll be good. The problem that we have right now in, uh, in quantum computing is everyone wants to know, what's the date? When's this going to happen? When's the headline uh, that comes out, right? Attackers are using quantum computing to run Shor's algorithm and break quantum uh, or, and break uh, public key cryptography. Anyone have a guess? Anyone wager a thought? Go ahead. A hundred years. years. 10, to 100. 10 to 100 years. Well, you're close. You're, you're in the range. Um, when, when we think about, you know, what does this mean to change or to break public key cryptography? Uh, we look at all the things that are at risk, right? Uh, anything that you have encrypted using uh, Diffie-Hellman or RSA key exchanges, right? Uh, those are what's going to be at risk. Uh, where is that used? Well, pretty much every network communication that we've, that we've used since SSL 1.0, right, back in Netscape Navigator, uh, all of it has used some form of uh, public key cryptography. Uh, the impact is really confidentiality and, confidentiality and integrity, right? Uh, anything that is right, using that cryptography is going to have some challenges. I asked Copilot, uh, you know, what, why is, why is Shor's algorithm such a big deal, and why, you know, why is RSA susceptible? And it gave a somewhat acceptable answer, right? It says, hey, RSA uses prime numbers, right? Large prime numbers. And when we think of large prime numbers and multiplying them together, it starts to get a little difficult. And then, you know, you do some some n minus one maths and multiply them together, and it gets more difficult. Um, and really, that's what Shor's algorithm in a quantum computer is going to be able to do: is calculate those or calculate those prime numbers faster, um, and really help to uh, decrypt a bunch of uh, encryption. So when we think about you know what this really means. We have to look at, you know, what's the reality, right? Um, the uh, Cloud Security Alliance has put out this date, approximately 2030, uh, or sorry, 2035, right? Uh, I think their countdown timer as of yesterday was five years, that we should have a capable, a quantum uh, relevant uh, quantum computer, a cryptographically relevant quantum computer. Uh, when I looked at their research, it was interesting. Uh, they, they've kind of just put it out there as a marketing, right? They're, they put it out there as this is the date we expect it to happen based on what we've seen uh, in industry. And when we look at you know, what it really takes to do quantum cryptography and cryptanalysis, uh, we're, we're really needing at this point about 2 million or so stable qubits. Anyone know how many we have today in the largest quantum computer? Not physical qubits. Yeah, but... It's, it's on the, yep, 56. <laughs> so if you think we need to get to 2 million, right, to get to the required error correction, which is 10 to the minus 6, um, right, and, and that's really what we're looking at. It's that, that error correction rate um, that we need. And today, in, in the yellow, you know, Quantinium announced uh, July 13th that, you know, they have the most powerful quantum computer, and it has 56 bits. So we're, we're a little ways from from 2 million, um, in my estimation. I'm not quite sure, but 56 to 2 million is a lot. That's a big, that's a big jump. Um, it has to be, so we have to find some exponential um, capabilities there, which we are doing. There, there's uh, some companies working on silicone-based, um, uh, silicone-based quantum computers and things like that. So uh, it, it's, it's coming. When we look at how many qubits is it gonna take to break uh, encryption that we have today, the existing RSA and, and Diffie-Hellman key exchange uh, algorithms. And when we look at, you know, the models that we've run, uh, we're, we're still in the 1 to 10 million qubits, right? Um, it's multiple qubits. It's, it's multiple millions of qubits in order to be able to. Um, and this, uh, this uh, research here was done uh, by the Microsoft Quantum team, uh, and, and they've run these simulations multiple times, and they continue to run the simulations. 
the interesting thing I found is when we look at uh, how long it would take a quantum computer to attack AES, which is the red document or the red triangles here, um, you'll notice it's uh, exponentially longer, right? I believe the dotted line there reads age of the universe. So we've got a little bit to go before before AES seems to be susceptible. Um, but that's right. Um, it's it's something that we look at again. The yellow line at the bottom, July thirteenth, uh, fifty six qubit system, and we're we're a little bit. I think that's zero point zero 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 five six million for anyone who wanted to um, to look at that. So we've got a, a little bit of ways to go. The challenge we really have though is cryptography is everywhere, right? We spread it like peanut butter on everything. And if you're allergic to peanuts, then, you know, cocoa butter or, you know, something else. Um, but it, it, it's, it's everything. It's in IoT. It's in your watch. It's in your phone. It's probably in the thermostat for this room, right? We've embedded this encryption in almost everything. But we're not really good at maintaining it, are we? Like, think of how many systems we have on the planet that are running just TLS and how many still have... Uh, you know, TLS versions that are deprecated. Uh, I think the last last statistic from uh, Qualys SSL Labs uh, was there's like 7,300 uh, systems on the uh, that they've scanned in May that are susceptible to these vulnerabilities or, or vulnerabilities that are publicly known. Uh, again, how hard is it going to be to change the root certificate authorities across the planet and to migrate them and replace all the certificates, right? This is the effort that we have to prepare for in the industry. It's not going to be easy, but it's coming. When we think about, you know, the, the history of SSL and TLS, this is the timeline that we're racing against, right? When we look at when, how long is it going to take for us to get to two to eight million qubits, it's really more of a, of a timeline of how long is it going to take to replace all of the cryptography. Um, and, and that's really the, the racing and why the move to post-quantum cryptography is, uh, is urgent, um, because most of us aren't planning that quite yet. Takeaways. What can you do today in, to, to prepare for quantum cryptography? Well, since NIST has not certified uh, uh, FIPS 203, 4, and 5, as of today, there's really not a lot you can do in production. Um, you can leverage those algorithms in a, you know, in a non-production environment. You can certainly look at those candidates and if you want to implement them uh, in, in certain ways, you, you certainly can. Um, you know, we are certainly in a place that we have to prepare for something that we can't do yet. Uh, but you can still try and you can still uh, implement uh, in, in test and, and start cutting your teeth in there. Anyone have questions? So the one you came, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so the question was, you know, is there uh, is there a recommendation around you know increasing key lengths and key sizes and things like that? Um, so for RSA, yes. Uh, for RS or not for RSA, sorry. For AES, yes. Um, increasing key sizes again. You're still at age of the universe, but. Right, we, we want to be age of the universe plus, you know, plus 10 maybe. Um, but for uh, RSA and uh, Diffie-Hellman, uh, not against quantum attacks because we're um, attacking the algorithms directly. We're not attacking the implementations. Um, and so it's, it's just, uh, it's not, it's not going to make a difference. It might make it incrementally take longer, but you're measuring it in, you know, in uh, minutes and days, not in weeks and, and years. So the real question is, what do we what do we think, right? Um, what is the projection, right? Uh, we we've heard, you know, uh, a, a, dumb, a a number of places that that uh, are are making advancements in quantum computing and and advancements in quantum, uh, and they are moving as fast as possible, right? Uh, moving from uh, superconducting down to silicone-based quantum computing uh, will change that math and will advance things. Uh, quite expedi expi expeditiously, uh, but until then, um, right, it's, it's, a, it's a race. 
best estimates is we've got about 10 years, right? Um, but if we go back to that SSL timeline, it's going to take us 10 years to change TLS and SSL across the planet. So it's not that we're racing against it. It's, it's we're racing against ourselves. Uh, attacks. Everyone loves to talk about quantum attacks, um, right? The harvest now, decrypt later. What are we doing about harvest now, decrypt later? Uh, the biggest one is do some attack modeling. Understand where your network traffic goes. Um, harvest now and decrypt later only works if I can capture your network traffic. If I can't capture your network traffic, then it's not going to work. Uh, what's not susceptible? Databases. If I steal your database, it's not susceptible to a quantum attack, assuming it's uh, encrypted with uh, AES. Um, if, if it's uh, encrypted you know, in some other way, it, it might be. But uh, for the most part, we're using TLS uh, to transmit data, not to do bulk encryption. Blockchain's the other one. Um, blockchain will require some changes. Um, that's going to be an interesting uh, changeover. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, companies are saying once we uh, sign that first packet, it upgrades the whole chain. We're not quite sure if that's going to work the way we think it will, because if I upgrade that chain, do everyone? Does everyone else have to be upgraded that's in that chain? So it's again a timing thing. Things that we have to work on. You got a question? So in most of this proposal that they base on lattice math, I think it's a mistake to base all of your solutions off the same mathematics. What, what's your feeling on that? So the question was, you know, the, the NIST base is, is doing lattice, uh, the three algorithms that are upper lattice based math, uh, math lattice math based um, algorithms. Uh, are there, you know, what's, what's my opinion? Well, um, again, I haven't done the deep cryptanalysis. I haven't done the deep math. Um, so uh, if you think about everything we've done in cryptography is based on math, right? Is math the real solution? Um, I'm not sure. There are other things we can do that we're working on in the future that maybe isn't math based. Maybe it's, it's uh, uh, you know, um, photon or light based doing other things. But yeah, I don't I don't see um, I don't see that. I assume that we would use other mathematics. I was mm -hmm. curious if, if you supported uh, you know, other solutions. Like, like there's something called um, uh, class breakable. Mm -hmm. No one's ever proven it's breakable. So I've been testing this now for decades. It's not breakable, it's breakable. Right. I, I would lean towards that. But uh, the NIST contest is not supported. Correct. Yeah, the, the, the NIST contest, uh, their, their rules, um, you know, were, were where they are and the agencies and the public comments were what they were. Um, but yeah, there, there are going to be other ways to solve that problem that we make in the future that we find in the future. Yeah. Sure. So the, the question is, you know, right now quantum is uh, is very expensive. You know, the the attack paths that we're using here are really we're talking about nation states, um, and and that is the you know you can you can do modeling and and things like that in AWS and and Google and IBM and and Microsoft's quantum uh, labs today, and you can leverage that power and run simulations. But again, they're not large enough uh, to do that at scale, and they are fairly expensive. Um, I would expect to, we're, we're talking about a, a, a five year life cycle for some of that to become more common. Yeah? It, it seems like the hybrid approach big tech is kind of the hard approach with having um, your uh, legacy compute be able to do error correct for the quantum part. And at that point, that's really getting to be kind of like 3,000 is about to be. Yep. Safe. Uh, the, the comment was in relation to using classic computers to error correct for quantum computers. Um, that is showing a lot of promise. It's showing a lot of uh, a, a lot of insight. Um, whether or not they can be used in the same method to run Shor's algorithm is still a question. I haven't seen anyone run those tests yet. But that should get our computers up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and, he, and, and that's the, the biggest challenge with quantum is finding the error-free qubits and, and getting them to, to be able to run the algorithms the way that you expect the results to run. And what about the uh, energy consumption? Because the velocity of energy consumption is coming way down really quickly. I mean, it's faster than other people. Yeah. 
Uh, so quantum energy uh, consumption, again, um, the, better, the better we know uh, what these supercomputers um, can do and, and uh, you know, the better we use new materials. Again, silicone-based uh, qubits are gonna be a big, um, a big advancement. Uh, the, the faster we will reach that qubit number. So does that adjust your time? Doesn't adjust mine, but I don't know enough about those advancements to. Yep. Yeah. Sure. So uh, the, the question is, you know, uh, what's the implication to Bitcoin and, and other, uh, um, you know, other um, challenges with blockchain? Um, and, and it becomes the, the question of, uh, again, uh, if we if, if quantum computers are able to to calculate uh, those keys, then, yes, there will be major implications to blockchain. Again, the race condition is how fast can we convert the existing blockchain to a new algorithm once those algorithms are available? But is it essentially the same effect except the, uh, you know, the communication? Yeah, so the, the, with a the blockchain, um, the attack vector is going to be being able to calculate the keys for wallets. Right, and being able to then add and remove things into um, that chain, um, based on being, you know, having that certificate or having those access to be able to calculate those keys. So it's really more of the I would expect the uh, the authentication components to be at more risk there than the data. I mean, blockchain data is an open uh, it's an open ledger, so there's really no data data encryption there at all. Right, you're you're really talking about the transactions and and who can authorize those transactions. And the same thing would be for you know any other authentication that you do that's using certificates, right? Think smart cards or or uh, credit card, right? Chip and pin, right? All of those algorithms will potentially uh, need to be evaluated for uh, updates as well, right? Last question. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, embedded systems and, and older hardware will, um, so the question was, you know, anything around embedded systems and, and things that can't take larger key sizes. And, and that's going to be the challenge, right? Uh, the history of our technology and the legacy, the, uh, the challenge of not being able to upgrade and, and uplift are going to require us to do things that we aren't prepared to do, right? You're talking about network isolations and things like that. and. I mean, if you think about it, if protecting that network communication is probably your best bet. All right, uh, thank you for an interactive session. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can find me on LinkedIn or I'll be walking around.